Hi, I'm Lucy, I'm from Sweet Poppy Stencils and today we're going to be showing you how you can change the stencil dimensions medium with uh, mica powders and I will give you a list of all the items that you're going to require to be able to do this project as well. Okay, the items we're going to use today um, are the first item is stencil dimensions translucent paste. Uh, this has been designed specifically for our requirements and um, took about two years to manufacture. Um, we're going to be using the Ocean's Blue Mica Powder and it's a beautiful vibrant blue, don't be scared of the colours. A little airtight pot, most important for all your residue to go in as you can see. I've already mixed some blue medium in there and that'll be fine for about three to four months non-airtight pot then you're only going to get back two to three weeks so it does make a difference. I've got a palette knife that's not essential but I do work with a palette knife quite a bit. Stencil tape this is a low tack stencil tape and then my card or whether or not you're going to use MDF or acetate uh, whatever your requirement is um, make sure it's a good quality. Magnetic sheet the magnetic sheet is so important, the magnetic sheet is going to hold your project tighter and then I've got my uh, stainless steel uh, spreader and this is so important, this will help you and it makes it so much easier for you. And last but not least but most important obviously is going to be our beautiful rocking horse uh, stencil and this has been designed exclusively for us by Emma Cronin one of our new designers and the detail on it is amazing. So let's see um, what we can show you and how we can change the colour of the paste. So we have placed the rocking horse, we're working with the rocking horse stencil, so we've placed the rocking horse stencil onto our die cut card already and We've also got the magnetic sheet underneath. Now the magnetic sheet is going to squeeze your project tighter, so it's going to help you. I never not work on a magnetic sheet. I've masked, put one piece of masking tape along the top and another piece to anchor it tight. So again, I'm going to replicate the bottom. So one piece and two pieces. And then I'm going to go down the sides. So one piece making sure it's stuck lovely to my stencil and I'm running my finger along. Make sure it's nicely stuck down. We're going to be working from the tail to the head and it's this section around here that is the reason. Um, anything that's not got a bridge, try and work with it rather than against it. It will help you. So we're going to mix our medium and all we're going to do is, I'm just going to remove my project a second, just to keep it clean, move it to one side. So, we're going to take the mica powders, and I prefer working with mica powder rather than acrylic paint, but you can use a good quality acrylic paint as well, if that's what you want. Um, just make sure it is a good product rather than um, a cheap acrylic paint because cheap acrylic paint has more water content in it. And then we're going to take a heap teaspoon and I'm using translucent paste. If I work with white paste then obviously it is going to milk it down. It's going to end up going very pale. So for example if I'm working with red uh, mica powder and white paste, I'm going to end up with pink paste. If you work with translucent, you're going to get the true colour of what you're working with, um, and translucent being one of my most favourites out of all the mediums. Just because we've changed in the colour of the paste doesn't mean we still can't glitter it. Um, you can do everything still with it. You're not changing the glue content on it, you're just changing the colour of it. So make sure it's all worked in, all the powder, and it's nicely worked in. There we go. Now store it in a little airtight pot. So take it, and we're just storing. Make sure it's 
all stripped in. There's a little bit in my pot previous from previous. That's no problem. It will last in an airtight pot. It's going to last at least uh, three to four months. In a non-airtight pot, it's a big difference. It's more like three weeks if you're lucky. Um, so a little bit of wadding in the lid and that will make it airtight for you. If you haven't got any wad and you're not sure it's airtight, then perhaps a bit of cling film over it before you put the lid down. So put my project back. Now my mat is lovely and clean and I'm a bit OCD so I do like it quite square to myself. Make sure it's nicely masked down and make sure your tape is stuck down perfect. So when you put your glue paste, you're going to put it on your stencil tape. Never work with it first on your stencil, always make sure it's off your project. Think of it as screen printing and you'll get a nice clean sweep. So with my spreader and we're using the flat edge of the spreader and it's about a 45 degree angle and you're going to let the stencil and the spreader dictate the thickness of your paste. So it's on and off. That goes straight into the pot to be reused again. There's no waste. On and off. And that is it. It's as simple as that. Take your sides off. And then that back into your pot to be reused. Or you can baby wipe your tools, keep them nice and clean, or drop them in a little bowl of water. So take your tapes off. One. And two. And off. And work your way around your project. stencil up and off. This goes straight into a bowl of soapy water. And there's your project. And it's all ready die cut, ready to go straight onto um, your card. I would drying time depends on the um, size of the stencil, the detail of the stencil. The more finer the detail, the quicker it dries. If I heat this with a heat gun, it is going to bubble. So what I will do is I would just leave this air dry. Um, and you've got all the beautiful detail there.